Okay, so evening everyone. Welcome to this offload challenging negative thinking uh, session. I'm Lee Jewett and I'm just going to be overseeing the slides. Um, you're going to have two really, um, the, I suppose they keep telling me good looking, <laughs> really good looking um, lads who's going to take you through it. Um, and they'll talk them through and, and they'll, they'll introduce themselves a, a little bit more as we go ahead. So straight away, I'm going to hand over to Sean Lund and Kevin LaRoya, who will, like I said, they'll, they'll speak about themselves and they'll give you a bit more of an intro into who they are and how they faced adversity at times. Sean? Thank you, Lee. Hi, guys. Um, thanks for uh, joining us this evening. So, myself, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name's Sean Lund. I've been a professional rugby league player for the last 17 years now. And um, although I've had some incredible highs, I've, I've had some incredible lows too. And why I'm involved with the rugby league cares and and so on is just to tell people that it's there's a lot of downsides to sport and we go through a lot of, you know, especially negative thinking, you know. Two years ago, I, I nearly lost my life. I was playing rugby, got a serious um, injury and then I ended up in hospital for three weeks. Um, I was at home um, for a further six weeks on antibiotics and medication. And following that, that sepsis, I got um, I got something called post sepsis syndrome, which is a bit like PTSD, which is what the, the soldiers get. So I had all all worlds of um, of problems then, and you know, and especially the negative thinking. So for me, I, I'm I'm in this to give back and just to let people know that you know what us rugby players that everyone sees as these invincible tough guys, we're not. We're far from it sometimes, you know, we're very vulnerable at times. So this is me giving back to you guys and, you know, letting you know that if you haven't got any, um, if you ever got any negative thinking that it's fine and as long as we flag it up and we know and then we can go forward from there. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit about sort of like my background of how I do it. And uh, I'll hand you over to Kev. Kev will touch on his story and then we'll, we'll, we'll get, rip into it. Hi, everyone. So my name is uh, Kevin Lahoye. Um, I'm from France. Uh, I've been living in the UK for uh, seven years soon. Uh, been playing, uh, been a professional rugby player for the last past 12 years in both France and, uh, and England. And uh, um, why now I'm, uh, I'm involved with, uh, with rugby cares is um, mainly because in 2016, when, uh, when I, I went through depression, I've been lucky enough. I had amazing people that reached out to me and uh, helped, me, helped me out. And, uh, and I feel now is, uh, is a bit of my, my duty to try to uh, uh, help to break the stigma and uh, try to uh, reach out and, uh, and help all, all, all the people who, who might need, need some help too. But also there's another reason quite close to my heart. Um, during my, my uh, phase of, of depression, I uh, sadly lost my little sister who uh, uh, she took her own life at the age of 17 and uh, she always uh, uh, experienced mental health. And uh, when it happened, uh, um, I feel like a uh, bad big brother, really. Like, I haven't been able to, uh, to be there for her. And, uh, and now being involved in a, such a, a, ch a great charity and a program like that is, uh, is the way to, uh, to honor a, a memory and try to, uh, to make her proud. Uh, but about uh, today, uh, challenge negative thinking, what, what it means to me, um, if, I, if I must admit, um, I always struggle with negative thinking. Uh, as, as far as I can remember, even still today, I still feel that sometimes. Um, I remember when I started playing rugby, uh, I always dreamed to be a professional player, but I, uh, I always thought I wouldn't be able to make it. Uh, but the funny thing is that on the other hand, I will uh, use those negative thinking to try to, to, uh, to push myself and, uh, and prove myself wrong that I could do it. And finally, I, I achieved my dream and I become um, a professional. Uh, uh, rugby league players, and uh, it's during my therapy, during my, my depression, where um, it allowed me to, to dig down and uh, see what was the cause of the uh, challenging uh, of those negative thinking. Sorry, and um, and I found that it was the the relationship I had with my mom. Um, um, I had quite a conflict relationship with my mom. She was really hard on myself and uh, always criticized everything I would do was never enough. So she would always have a, a negative comment to to do. And that's something I carried away with me. And, uh, and this is why today I try with uh, some tool we're going to look at uh, to try to challenge those uh, negative thinking. Thank you, Kev. Thank you. So, right, let's... Uh, so, today's overview, guys. So, what we'll be looking in is the, the recognition of thoughts and the types of negative thinking, the ABC model, and then we'll have a team talk and a de uh, debrief at the end. Right, so, guys... 
today at offload is what happens at offload stays at offload. However, if you disclose something that may put, put yourself or someone else at risk, we do have the duty to report it to keep yourself and others safe. And it, today, guys, I just want everyone to be nice and open. You know, if you've got anything you need to say, put it in the chat box. Uh, unmute yourself. Let's um, let's get a load out of this. You know, it's a bit like when you go away with the guys or the girls. You know, what what happens there stays in there. Hopefully, and uh, it doesn't come back. So yeah, that's that's what we do. We're all about discretion here and helping each other. And again, don't don't be that person at the end of end of this session say, "I wish I said this" or "I wish I said that," because like I said, we're all here to learn from each other, and uh, we're all going through similar problems. Right. So recognition of thoughts. What is a thought? Thoughts are just a thought. They're our ideas, uh, they're our ideas, opinions, and beliefs about ourselves. We have sixty to eighty thousand thoughts a day, and not all of them are going to be good or positive. So, how I look at this is a bit like social media. So, if you think of social media, if you put a, a picture on there and you get sixty to eighty thousand comments, they're not all going to be positive. They're not. And then the functionality: we need thoughts to function and navigate through the day. Right, so we've got a little activity to start us off with. So I want everyone to buy into this, please, guys. So everyone can close your eyes, please. Lee and uh, Kev, you as well, please, fellas. So we're in our beautiful kitchens at home, guys. We pick up a bright yellow ripe lemon. We stick it on the chopping board. We take out our favourite knife. We cut it up into pieces. We pick up a piece of the lemon, put it towards your face, put it in your mouth and take a bite, open your eyes. Right, so some of you may have noticed that your mouth started to water and produce extra saliva. Um, anyone anyone um, did this? Yeah. Yeah, so why is this, we ask? This is because the mind cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's vivid imagined. You're, you produce the same feelings. Right, so we've got, we've got two slides now on types of negative thinking. So we have the all or nothing thinking, we have the mental filter, we have jumping to conclusions, emotional reasoning, and labeling. Kev's gonna jump in and tell us too what he's, he's had trouble with in the past, and then obviously I'll jump in and I'll say what I've, I've struggled with in the past. Sean, Sean, Kev, Kev, Sean can, I, can I jump in there on that last one? Please. Yeah. I think with with regards to the um, the lemon exercise, then it yeah. just shows how powerful our minds really are, and it shows yeah. that you know the images we create are not necessarily the images that we have to live by. It's our mind can trip us up at times, so sometimes it's about working with the facts and stepping back. Yeah, just wanted to add that there, mate. Yeah, thank you, Lee. All right, so um. So example of a type of thinking, uh, to be honest, I could uh, relate all of them to, uh, to myself because that's what it makes sense about the thousand and thousand of different four we have every day. But if I have to pick two, for example, the jump into conclusion, that was something uh, during, for example, my career, I would uh, uh, always um, always do. So uh, for example, like if uh, I played a game on the weekend and I felt I didn't play very well, whole week I will uh, I will try to, uh, to, uh, to uh, interpret and analyze the, uh, the, the, the uh, act and behavior of the coaching staff to see if I could get any signs of if I will be picked for the following week. And I remember I will make myself, I will drive myself crazy, like I uh, wouldn't be able to sleep at night because I was looking for those little signs to reassure me to be sure I will play. Even if uh, sometimes I'll look at my start and be like, no, I, I've been okay. But it was always a but that the same bringing back to my mom always say something negative. And uh, another example is um, even on a, a, a every day with uh, with my partner, for example, if uh, I don't know one day I notice she's a bit different or it's like I don't take in consideration she might have, uh, as well having a bad day or something like that. I try to interpret uh, anything. So for example, oh, she doesn't want to be with me anymore or she doesn't want me. And uh, and sometimes I can make myself a bit, a bit crazy about it. Then the other one, it, it will be uh, labeling. So, um, for the, the best example that comes to my mind is uh, in 2016, we were playing at AK at the time and we had a really bad season, we got relegated. And during that season, I spent half of the year uh, injured. And when I came back, uh, I quite kind of struggled to get back into the team. 
And um, at the end of that year, got relegated and uh, have been my contract been taken off. And uh, I remember when I was sat at home and looking on social media and see majority of the squad getting resigned. I clearly felt like uh, like uh, I was a comp- like, like the the cause like uh, uh, I was I was a loser basically uh, because I didn't understand why um, I'm not getting the shot and most of the squad getting the shot um, and 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 that really had uh, played a massive part for me getting to depression because um, all these four I had from before they were all coming mixing into my head and it was really hard to get away from that. But after doing this therapy, what, what I, I learned from that is, uh, is to look at the fact. Uh, so, for example, jumping to conclusion, um, look at fact, you'll be, no, I'm not a bad player. I've done this positive during the weekend. So, yes, I'll be able to play next weekend. Uh, or, for example, no, I'm not the cause of this uh, relegation. I'm not a loser. I, I, I try to look back of what I achieved so far in my career. And that gave me lots of confidence to to bounce back. So that would do the thing uh, when you have negative four. Um, a way to challenge them is to look at the facts and uh, you will see you'll be really surprised or, or what, what you'll find out. Yeah, thank you. And I'll touch on the ones that I, I've struggled with definitely over the years is the all or nothing thinking. And this comes down to, to eating. So for instance, if, if, I'm, if I'm eating really well, I, I literally, I don't touch any chocolate or anything like that, right? But there might be a day where I'll have a bar of chocolate and then literally I think that, the, the full day's finished then. Like, it's, it's over, you know, my diet's gone out the window and I just think, well, it's only been a bar of chocolate and then I beat myself up about it and then I get down and then I just think, well, it's just a bar of chocolate. Do you know, why Why do I need to just my whole diet and the whole day that I've been good go out the window because of that? So that's, that's for me, definitely that I need to work on is that, do you know what, stop, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Don't put all my eggs in that one basket because sometimes I'm doing really well and as soon as I fall off the bus, that's it, I come completely off it. It gets derailed sometimes and that's something that I need to really work on and again similar to you Kev the jumping to conclusions I've I've always been a a very um a people pleaser you know I'm the youngest out of them out of my whole family and I've always tried to please people all the time and so and and I use this in games so when, when we used to play rugby I used to I used to do like one bad thing in a game and I might have had an absolute fantastic game and I'll do one bad thing and I just think that my whole game's done then so then I'll go, the, I'll go the next day and I'm just thinking that the coach is going to hammer me, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And then now I just I just front up to it now. Do you know, if I've done something wrong, I'll go speak to the coach and say, listen, I've done this. What is it? And then I, I don't need to worry about that. I can put it to bed and then my anxiety levels come down and then I can just relax and put it to bed. So we have more types of negative thinking. So we've got the, the overgeneralizing, the disqualifying the positive, magnification of a problem, Critical words and personalization. So, Kev, have you got two on here, please, pal? Yeah, on, on sorry, on this one, I will, I will pair up the disqualifying, disqualifying, sorry, the positive and critical word. Uh, prime example that comes to my mind of about those, those example is um, um, currently I'm studying a degree at university, and uh, and when it started, I thought I would just uh, pass it, and uh, and uh, month after month, I, I noticed I wasn't quite bad at it and uh, I, I started aiming for, for higher. And uh, last year I competed Masugoni with a 72% uh, overall, which is um, equivalent of a first. And instead of uh, be happy, tap myself on the shoulder because before that I never stood it before. I never had any qualification whatsoever. Even though my tutor would fall, I would never <laughs> done anything. And unless of or like tapping Tapping on my, on my shoulder, I was like, oh, but 72 is only uh, first. It's only f- just to pass the first. I need to get more. And, um, and, and if you don't like pay attention to those, you can really like um, disqualifying yeah, what, what you've done, what you've achieved. And but me, instead of that, I was looking what I haven't achieved. So again, it's like, try to be true to yourself, to be fair with yourself. And, uh, and 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 no feeling ashamed to say no. I've done I've done well, and and fill your mind with a positive thought. Yeah, and for me, the the magnification of of, of problems is massive for me. So for me, again, going back to, back to rugby. So I used to when I used to play, and I used to make a uh, make a. Um, an error or anything, drop a ball, or I used to start worrying about that problem right away. 
And we used to go into the video the next day and I used to just think that I'm going to get my legs blown off all the time, you know? And then, so that night, I never used to sleep before, um, after the game. Sleeping before games, never a problem. Sleeping after the game, when I was tired, um, I'd, I'd go put my head down on the pillow and I'd just literally, the, the game, I'd just rerun the game from my head and I'd think about all the bad things that I did wrong. Never, never the positive that I, that I played well and I'd done a couple of bad things. And then, so then I'd go into, go into video the next day and no, then the coach wouldn't even say anything about it sometimes. And I'm just like, wow, why have I spent all night worrying about something that I didn't need to worry about? And then what I did was when I, when I was struggling coming through playing rugby, I read a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. And what I learned from that book is that she says in there that 90% of the problem that you think it is, it's actually, it's 90% less than what, what you actually think it is. So it's 10%. And do you know what? I don't know about you guys, but if you cannot have a think now of when you've, you know, you've worried a lot, you know, you've lost sleep, you know, you've not eaten and you worry about things and, and you know, it comes the next day and you're like, do you know what? I've, I've worried for nothing. And I'm sure we've all been there, you know, and, and done that. And the, the personalization, you know, blaming yourself on taking responsibility for something that wasn't completely your fault. As rugby players, um, what, Obviously, we have egos and, you know, we, we like to take, you know, especially me being a captain of, of clubs that I've played at, I've always taken everything on too much as if it's my fault. And sometimes um, you think that's like the brave thing to do, you know, and the right thing to do, but sometimes it's a stupid thing to do because it, it sort of, in 2018, it probably led to me getting ill. I was playing rugby, we were in the middle eights, I was the captain and because we'd already been relegated, you know, a couple of years before, I thought that, you know, it was going to be my fault if we got relegated again. So I went about that injury all the wrong, you know, I, I was taking pain medication to play and it just, I was just getting into a hole and just getting worse and worse and, you know, just blaming myself and it, like I say, it nearly cost me my life at the end of it. So for me, this negative thinking and, and these, these um, bullet points here are, are, are massive and, and how we go about, you know, um, solving our, our neg negative thinking. So we have here the ABC model. So the ABC model explains why we think the things that we think, why we do the things that we do. And so an active activating event. So for instance, if I was, I, I went to training one day and I got into a little scuffle with one of the players on the, um, on the pitch. And I thought, well, well, probably six months to 12 months before I learned about this, this negative thinking, I, I would have thought that I'd done something wrong because he, he lashed out at me. So, so for me, I, I would have thought, well, what have I done wrong? You know, and then obviously we, um, we stopped training. We went our separate ways. We went home and I could have spent all night thinking that it was my problem that I'd done something wrong to him. But it turned out the next day when we came into training, I spoke to him and he said, oh, sorry about yesterday. It was actually, I'm going through a bad time at home. They're not offering me a contract. It's actually me. So I could have spent that full day thinking that it was my, that it was me. And I could have went and had a crappy day. So again, is this something that you guys have, you know, come across, you know, when you say you've just bumped into a friend and you think, oh, they're a little bit off today. What have I said? What have I done? Do you know, and it, it might just be totally nothing to do with you, to do with them. And what you do, you go away and you have a crap day for it. Whereas if you go speak to them and just sit and, and they are feeling a bit off and you just think, well, do you know what? They might just be having a bad day. Then you go on, you go on your way, forget about that. And you have a good day. And then like say the next day, like in my case, it was all good. We spoke and, it, you know, we put it to bed. So again, this is, um, this is massive as well for, for athletes as well, that a lot of them do this to help the, the game. So we have here, we have some examples of the ABC model. So we have the, the person one, and the person two. So I'll be person one and Kev can be person two. So the activating event is we're going to be jumping out of a plane. My belief of this is this is amazing. It's like I'm actually flying. So the consequences of that is that I'm fit, I've got feelings of excitement and I want to do it again. So then obviously and then person two, which is Kev. So my belief is uh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to die. And the consequences for the feeling of stress, frustration, and doesn't want to do it again. And yep. uh, and, and 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 on that, I'm pretty sure, like all, all of us, we can take, um, we can relate to some uh, some example and uh, and really to apply those examples to yourself. You can really uh, that can show you that it, it does really work. If you if you go into like a, an event or a task or something you 
you will do for the first time, for example, with the wrong mindset, is most likely like uh, you're gonna, you, 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 you're not gonna achieve it. So for example, I can remember when I uh, started to play Superliga Catalan and uh, we played Wigan, it was one of my first games. And I was playing in front of uh, Arison Hansen and I was, oh my God, he's a, he's a big guy, he's huge. And during the week at training, I was thinking too much and I was dropping loads of balls. And I was thinking too much about, uh, don't drop the ball, don't, don't drop the ball, don't drop the ball. And I was thinking too much about that. The first two balls, I dropped it. And after my game was gone. Um, and after I could relate that to another game where I was like playing home in Toulouse with Catalan. And I was uh, so motivated. I, was, uh, I, I, I want to prove like I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm a good player. And I had one of my, of my best games. So really like it make a difference how you uh, uh, you go into the, the this event, which mindset you have. Yeah, so with me, I, um, a big one for me is that the, the activated event is is wedding. So for me, my, my dad's been married four times. So I I never really want to get married. Um, so I, I marriages were, were over and done. So when my brother when my brother got married, it was just like it was one of the, I was I was best man. It was you know or what because I. I I'd been best man when I was like 11 years old, you know, my dad's had to do a speech and everything, you know, all that carry on. And so I had to do it again. And it was, it, obviously it was awful first time around. And I just thought, you know what, this is not going to be good. But then, and then my brother got married and then it, it was brilliant, you know, absolutely fantastic. You know, my whole beliefs and everything had changed. And then when, my, when I came to get married three years ago, I had the best time of my life. I couldn't wait. I just, I enjoyed everything for it. So there's, there's the two different scenarios where I've had to change my um, thought process and then obviously we go into a, a sporting one so when we're on the game all all sports people um, no matter what sport you play is is going through this so again so person one myself is the activating event so I knock on on the game so again I have just cost my team the game and then the consequences feeling stressed frustration and I don't want to carry the ball again so and, and then in this case going home and not sleeping not sleeping at all through the night, having the worst night's sleep, waking up in the morning, having anxiety and just having a crap day. And then you've got Kevin, who's person two. So my belief is uh, I need to make up for my mistake. In consequence, <laughs> feelings of excitement and wants to carry the ball again. And that's exactly related to the example I, I, I gave uh, earlier, that if you go with this mindset, um, with the proper mindset, you can, you, you can manage it automatically. If you go with like... Uh, a loser mindset, if I can say, is most likely like you, it's not going to turn okay. Yeah. So this is where, um, so what, what we sort of covered now, so we, we thousands of thoughts every day, is that we recognise that both positive and negative thoughts. When we have a negative thoughts, we need to recognise them and challenge them with evidence and examples of positive outcomes. Using the ABC model, we can convert negative thinking to positive thinking. And what actions you're going to take to convert negative thinking to positive thinking. So, um, Lee, I can't see anything on, on my screen and it comes to, has, has anyone said anything or that, that we can go on? No, not just yet, man. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. Um, anything just yet. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. I'm just having a bit of trouble. Yeah. No, nothing's so, come up. Yeah, on this one. So on this one, guys. Oh, so we've got we've got setting a goal. So what what I want you guys to do is I want to I want to sit down and I want to set a goal for next uh, for next week. And as we can see here, Usain Bolt sets sets his the highest standards that he can achieve. And what I want to get across with setting goals is that we've got to be realistic with our goal setting because sometimes it can be detrimental to us. We can set our goals too too high, and even though. So, for instance, myself, my goal when I was younger was to play, was to play Super League and get my number, uh, my, my name and number on the back of my shirt, like a squad number, because I played at work in town. So I never got the chance to have my, my name on the back. So that was my goal. So then I, I reached that one, but I was very fortunate. I ended up playing for England. But if I was, if if I had set my goal of playing for England when I was younger, and I, I still played for Super League, you know, I still won Grand Finals, which I've been fortunate to do and didn't reach it, well, I've still had a fantastic career, but just because I've never reached the, the ink playing for England and playing for the country, I'll be down on myself. So, again, with this, with, and I, I think it's very clever with what Usain Bolt, because obviously everyone knows Usain Bolt is, you know, is the, the best sprint of all time 
that it's the highest standard that he can achieve. It's relevant to him. So for, <laughs> for me, is that it's got to be relevant to yourself. You know, don't be don't be uh, going on someone else's you know um, goal. You know what they're doing, or stop challenging yourself against other people. Challenge yourself against against yourself. So. So I want everyone, and, and the goal that I want us to sort of touch on is obviously we're talking about negative thinking. So I want to know that every time that you, you're in that situation where you've actually thought of, you know, you, you, whether you react negatively or not, or you, you're negative thinking, that's okay, but try and jot it down, you know, so then next time you come and you, you know, you can, you can pull yourself up because it's all about knowledge at the end of the day. If you know that you, 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 you're going down the hole of negative thinking, you can pull yourself up. It's when we don't know what we're doing. That's when we can't stop it. If that makes any sense, so that that's my challenge for you, Kev. Have you got a goal for these guys that you that you'd like them to set? Yeah, for me it would be like uh, so. For example, if you if you can feel that you have this uh, a negative four going to your head, and you can label uh, label this negative four, uh, look look at facts uh, and um, and um, like for example, I don't know. At the minute, I'm going through some tough time with my ex partner, who's trying to. To prove that I'm not the, the best at and uh, and and sometimes like she said a few things and they will stay stuck into my head and I start to believe it. But that's where I really start to try to challenge that and and look at facts. I know I'm not I'm 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 a good dad and I've got uh, fuck the stuff I'm I'm doing every day to try to be role model for my son and the way he is with me. So that will be my challenge. That every time you have um, a, a negative four, stop. I believe what is it? Ask yourself if you want it. And, and try to challenge it by looking at, at, at facts. Yeah. Can I jump in there, Sean, please? Yes, yeah, so I'm just looking at, you know, the, the full presentation you guys have, do, have done up to now. And two things stick out really, really like from me sitting back and listening is, you know, you, you've come up with loads of like thought provoking ideas, which is fantastic. You know, people can take away. But just, just when you spoke about the, the jumping out of the plane, and, if, and then we before <laughs> talk about you know the the lemon in the kitchen the the images we create if you if you think about if you get on a plane and you're not scared of flying but the person outside you is scared of flying you know there's two completely different images being created you know you go into the same destination but I guarantee one of them who's not scared of flying is thinking about the beach the sun the sand the one outside he's just thinking about just getting there without the plane crashing, for instance, because there's two massive different images. But yet, we still kind of step out of that comfort zone and the person who's scared of flying is still stepping out there because they're challenging them themselves. There's an opportunity, which is the holiday. So that just allowed me just how how powerful our images are. But at the same time, is that what you just said there, Kev, is how we can create that positive outcome as opposed to a negative one? Because the negative one would be you never get on a plane. You never experience, you know, anything away from from your country, you know. So it's about stepping out there, and then just just one more to finish was, don't get caught up with what's normal for yourself, you know, what's normal for you and what's not normal. So what you'll find is there'll be some normal thinking patterns, and there'll be some not normal thinking patterns, but only you will know that, and you'll know when the time is to address that with the tools the boys would give you throughout the presentation. Over to you, Sean. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Yeah, so on there, guys, like I say, if we've got any questions or anything at all that you'd like to sort of touch on, just we've got obviously the chat, bo chat box there that we uh, that you want to put in there and we'll, we'll answer it. And then um, just, just going on the, the negative thinking again, a, a bit on, on my story is that I'm, I'm coming to the stage in my career where I'm going to be, be retiring. And, um, and again, people's negative thought process around things. So I, I signed at Batley last year and... Um, at the start of this season, and I had to get a job, so I was I was doing resin flooring at the time, so, and I went into a, a factory uh, at Wakefield, and mm -hmm. we were doing the floors, and some guy came up to me and says, "Oh, what are you doing this? What are you doing?" I'm like, "I've got a job, I'm, I'm working." Why he goes, "Oh, I thought you were a Super League player, you shouldn't be working here." I said, "No, no." So I said, "Listen," I said, "Just because I was a rugby player, I, you still need to work after it." And now what I'm getting is the negative thought process of people. Just because I was a rugby player, he thought. He thought I was too good to, to go and do that, you know. And then, again, I had to sort of challenge myself then because I was like, well, no, not at all, because some people can get sort of shy and, you know, get embarrassed about that. But I was like, no, not at all. I said, I've had my career and I, 
and now I've got to move on and, you know, life goes on. And it just shows you a lot of people always look at the negative negative side of things and, and always going, you know, or always looking at the doom and gloom of things where, again, looking at, you know, jumping out of a plane, look at the good side of things. You know, a lot of people say that uh, the glasses are half empty, half full. You know, it's, it's, it's very, everyone's perspective of how we look at things. You know, you can have a, you don't have to be a positive Paul all your life, you know, and think that everything's great because it's not great. You know, life's hard sometimes and it's, it's hard at the moment. But the thing is, you can, you can approach that with a positive outlook. You know, for me, I went into lockdown with three jobs and I came towards the end of it. The first lockdown, I had no jobs. So it just showed you that, you know, but they get, then again, and then I've, I've kept my head down and, and looked on the positive side and said, well, I've got some time at home. I can build my bridges back with my family where I had a tough time with the sepsis, post sepsis syndrome and everything. And then I got through it. And now that I'm, I'm working here and everything's great now. So again, I'm, I look at positive ball all the time, but I try to look at the positive side of things. I feel I definitely agree on that. And see, um, like when you talk about the, the COVID, it, it will be, um, look, um, really like no no uh, thinking that those negative four they, they won't last um and even like bad time won't last there's always a, a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, uh for example i like during covid yes same as you learned like uh, uh, couldn't be able to play couldn't be able to work do do uh, um no much and uh, quickly i could turn into like uh, like i was before dramatic or uh, seeing everything dark but then said I, I was like trying to look at uh how i can use this uh, challenging time to get out of this challenge in time, like stronger. So for example, like I was like, okay, I can't play rugby. That's, that, that, that's not really good. But what I can do is I've got plenty of time to focus on my, on my study. And I smashed my last semester and, and go uh, 70%. And also uh, learned to do the same when you play part-time. Uh, it was a, quite a big shock when I play part-time because you see train night and you come back home, it's 10 o'clock, then you have to get everything ready for the next day. For me, I don't go to work, but I go to uni. And uh, when I do have my son, I feel like I just take him from nursery and don't really enjoy with him. So during lockdown, I was like, okay, so that would be my time to have proper, uh, uh, to stronger the relationship with my son and have proper time with him. And uh, at the end of this COVID period, I felt our relationship was so much stronger. And uh, and and and, and that, that that's what it is like. Um, if anything, I feel like we are living at the minute. Don't focus too much on what you cannot do. To try to turn it around about what you can do to uh, to get to get of it uh, stronger. Yeah, my my favorite quote it's uh, from an ex player that I used to play with, Jamie Peacock, and he said that tough times don't last, last tough people do. And you know what? It's right. You know, and it epitomizes now what we're all going through now. You know, we're all going through a very tough time. We're all in it together, but it, we will come out of it. You know, start thinking positively. You know, do little steps. You know, fill your day with stuff. And, you know, it will pass, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, guys, I just, um, on behalf of myself and Kev, uh, I'd just like to say a huge thank you, guys, and hopefully you, you got something out of it. And I'll just hand you over to, to Lee. Lee's just going to gonna finish off here. And, um, yeah, again, guys, thank you. Just your arm. Cheers, Kev. Fantastic, that. Um, great session. So, guys, as you can see at the moment, there's a, there's a QR code, and it would be greatly appreciated if you could fill out the questionnaire once you take a picture of it with your phone, it'll take you through. And what you can do, you can get a chance of winning. If you put your email address, address in, you can get a chance of winning um, your favourite club's shirt. You'll get drawn into a hat. Um, and then on behalf of Offload, if you want to um, come to the more face-to-face -face sessions when we get back up and running or you're interested in attending any more, please visit Rugby League Co's website and follow offload through um yeah and hopefully we'll see you guys face to face pretty soon thank you